Right on, guys, welcome back to another video. Back in the shed today, uh, just gonna talk about a few tips for yellow belly fishing. You know, we're into spring now, uh, a bit over a month in. Uh, everyone's got a yellow belly on their morning, especially if you're a freshwater fisher, so. Thought I'd sit down, I've been getting a fair few questions on the gram and that type of thing. Just uh, in regards to the yellow belly fishing, uh, what to do when you get out there and whatnot. Um, this is mainly gonna be referring to Windermere, uh, but if you are fishing another waterway, uh, it'll be just as as applicable to, to that waterway itself. So, got five tips. Um, I'm just gonna run through them real quick. It's not gonna be a long video, so we'll get straight into it. And the first one is to fish the edge. You know, it's spring, we wanna be fishing the edge. You know, if you go on a trip to Windermere or anywhere, you go on a specific trip to go catch yellow bell, you wanna be fishing the edge, it's the best way to catch them. You don't want to be sitting out on timber, bobbing up and down soft plastics. You want to be catching fish on the edge. And the best thing is, this time of year, they're on the edge. We've had a lot of rain over the last two years. All the dams are basically full. Even Windermere is up over 90% at the moment. And as I speak, we're getting more rain. And the next four days look pretty brutal in terms of rain. So I wouldn't be surprised if Windermere goes up 100% and over the wall uh, after this week. So. What that means is there's a lot of flooded ground. Uh, water's coming up on a new ground that hasn't been flooded in a long time. There's a lot of crustaceans and particularly worms that are getting flushed out of that soil and the fish are up on these edges and they're feeding up. So this year especially is you, right now and for the next couple of months you really want to be fishing that edge. It's where the active fish are and they're going to be feeding. So you're going on a trip and, you, you're, tu and you're struggling for the first little part of the trip don't revert to going sitting on a tree and fishing deep with soft plastics because personally, it's nowhere near as fun to catch a fish and those fish aren't the active ones either. You know, you might be, you might be able to, to get a couple, especially if you've got live tech, of course, you're gonna probably be able to catch a few fish on the trees. But if it's me, I'm finding those active fish up on the edge and targeting them. Second one is to fish you know, proven lures and proven techniques. Um, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of specific techniques that are out there at the moment, well, nowadays, uh, for fishing for yellow belly. Um, one, of the, one of the main ones over the last sort of four or five years that I've talked about a lot, and I'll continue to talk about it, is fishing soft vibes. Um, this is a new Daiwa Stige soft shell vibe that I've mentioned before. They're not out yet, but they will be out at the end of this month, hopefully. Uh, but any soft soft vibe, transams, fish traps, samaki, vibalicious, that type of thing. Um, they work, learn how to use them properly and you'll catch fish on them. So if you haven't seen a video of me or someone else doing the shaking retrieve, look back through a couple of videos, I'll link, I'll link a video down below actually, of how to, how to do the shaking technique with these soft vibes. It's killer, it's working still to this day really, really well. And when you're up on the edge, um, fishing these guys, you wanna be shaking it. You don't wanna be just doing a basic lift, drop, lift, drop. You really wanna be imparting plenty of action there, making this thing look like a fleeing bait fish. Uh, fl a fleeing um, yabby or shrimp, sorry. And that's what gets the yellow belly keen to commit to eat these things. So that's one. That's really good at the moment. The other one that's really good at the moment is jerkbait fishing. So jerkbaits, this is probably your go-to. It's a Jackal Squirrel 67. Suspending, uh, obviously you want a suspending lure when it comes to jerkbaits. Let that lure sit in its face. That's a really good one. The other one that I've been using a fair bit the last few trips that I've been out and having a lot of success on is the Diver Spike 53. So it gets down to about or eight foot, six six foot. Um, you can get it down a bit deep if you want to, but it's just perfect at the moment with all those fish sitting right up on the edge. If there's a lot of grass on a point or on a bank, and it's a bit frustrating fishing the soft vibe, getting caught up all the time, go to something like a jerk bait and fish these just over the top of that weed or that flooded grass. It's not gonna get caught up, and it's gonna get those fish that are sitting a little bit higher in the water column. So. That's another one, another way to do it. You know, at the moment, the fish are right up tight. Find them, you don't have to have live tech to find them. 
you can find them on your old sand, you'll see the arches. If they're right on the bottom, fish a lure that's going to be right on the bottom. So a soft fibre that's going to be fishing that, that real sort of bottom metre of the water column. If they're down there, fish the appropriate lure. So a soft fibre, a ZX40, even shaking a grub, like a Berkeley 3-inch grub that you roll up and down trees. Put that on the right size jig head. It might be a sixth of an ounce, it might be a quarter of an ounce, depending on your depth. Go up on the bank and shake that. If you're finding the fish are sitting a bit higher, so you're fishing in three metres of water, those fish are only down one and a half metres of water, then you go to your jerk baits. You go to your T-60s, that type of thing, and, fit, and target those fish that are sitting in that middle column of the water with the right lures. When you're fishing for them, you don't really want to be, you don't want your lure to be under the fish a lot of the time. I know if you're fishing in the bottom, um, you're targeting those fish that are feeding sort of down and on the bottom, but if a fish is sitting mid, mid water, you really don't want to be shaking a soft fibre under him for the most part. I'd much prefer to have a jerk bait or something slow rolled, a hard body TN60 going just above his eye line, and that's when you get him to commit. You know, using the live tech, you sort of get that feedback, and you know that if you if you fish a lure, doesn't matter what it is, a grub, jerk bait, whatever, if you can get that fish to to rise to to the bait they're a lot better chance of eating it. So that's your lures, fish, proven lures, and proven techniques. You know, you can go out of, your, like out of the, go a bit different, um, try different stuff, because there's always gonna be a new technique that no one's really found yet, and you will catch a lot of fish. Even in my last video, I was just slow rolling, slow rolling these things. Little hard bodies, little crankbaits, basically. Just slow rolling them, getting really good, um, interaction with the fish, plenty of hits, just from trying something new, I've never really done that before. So try different stuff, you know, little jerk, little jerk baits, double clutch, 48, 60s, different stuff that sort of not everyone's using as well, give that a go, but it's in the same ballpark as that it's a jerk bait, it's a hard body, something that's gonna appeal to those fish that are sitting in that, that water column you're targeting, so. That's your second one. Bit long-winded and I went on a bit of a ramble, but that's it. <laughs> the third one is assist hooks. Use assist hooks. Now, this applies to anything that you're fishing on the bottom. So, a blade, ZX40, any soft fibre, you want to be using assist hooks. So, what are assist hooks? I might get a close-up of that, but they're a set of assist hooks. Bang on. Now, I get asked a lot of the time what six hooks I use, and in the past, I've really always run just cheap eBay jobs. Now, they are a good hook, pretty, pretty solid hook, but the braid that holds them together was not very good, and after one or two fish, you'd have to replace them. So, they were cheap, but I was just going through them like hot cakes. So, I've never really recommended that exact brand before, and I've never really found another one they've been really happy with. Um, the Van Foot Twin Dancers were pretty good. But now Dyla has just released a set of assist hooks, or a pack of assist hooks that are really good and I'm happy to recommend these things. I've used them, you know, the last couple of trips I've been out. They only just recently come out. And the last few trips I've been, jammed a lot of fish on these and they hold up really well, really solid, good, really good hook on them. Sharp, sticky, pins of fish, have dropped bugger all fish on them and they just, they're perfect. They're a size eight hook. They only come in one size, so size eight hook, which is bang on for what you want. They're tied onto a solid ring, which is another big thing. A lot of your assist hook brands these days are tied onto a split ring, not a solid ring. Problem with that is your little braid where it's tied onto the ring, it can easily slip, especially when you put them on, on and off with your split ring pliers. You can find that loop gets stuck in your split ring where you don't want it to be, and then it can just be an absolute pain to get them, like get it back how it should be. It's tied to that split, if it's tied to the solid ring, it's always gonna be solid basically. It's never gonna be able to come out, of it, come out of there. So then it's also got a split ring onto that solid ring, and all you gotta do is attach that split ring to your lure. So it's super easy. They come in packs of three. They retail for about 990, I think, cheap as, for what they are and you're not gonna like I've gone through 
I've gone through two sets so far in three trips, so they hold up. So grab yourself back. The other one, other good thing is they're offset. Sorry, we've got to say. If you can see there, they're offset. One hangs a bit lower than the other, which is perfect. You don't. I don't like assist hooks that sit the exact same height because if a fish obviously short strikes it or he's a little bit off, you're not going to get him if the two hooks are in the exact same spot. You're much better having off a set of assist hooks that are a little bit offset like that. So that's them, assist hooks, check them out. They come in three different colours. Um, there's a like a green one there, an orange, and there's a red. Um, honestly, I don't think colour matters that much. Just go with what are you whatever you prefer, but yeah, check those out. They're called the Dollar Retrofit Assist Hooks. If not, if you can't find them, just get any set of assist hooks because, it, because a set of assist hooks is so much better than trebles when it comes to blades and soft fobs on the bottom. The reason, the number one reason is, you know, we're fishing flooded areas now or we're fishing near weed and assist hooks do not fell up in the weed nowhere near as bad as what trebles do. So as you can see, this is one of the Dollar D soft shells that I've been running. I've actually, they come rigged with two trebles. I take both trebles off and they actually do come with a set of these assist hooks. And I've just been running one set of assist hooks on the back, nothing on the front. What that means is not having a treble or a set of assist hooks on the front. I'm not gonna pick up near as much uh, dying flooded grass that's around in Windermere at the moment. It's just so, mu so much more beneficial because you're gonna get a lot more of your retrieve where you're not fouled up by debris on your lure. The other thing with the assist hooks, which I've talked about before, is they stay in the fish a lot better. You know, yellow belly, their mouths, they don't really go too well with trebles. So they can throw them quite easily and it can be a bit of a pain. If you get an assist hook, a single hook into the fish, it's very rare that they're gonna come out. Trebles, they just seem to throw them so well. Um, I do still fish trebles on my midwater baits, but in saying that, so your jerk baits, Teen 60s, I sort of, sometimes I'll fish assist, sometimes I'll fish trebles. You know, if I'm slow rolling, I'll normally go trebles. If they, if I'm gonna let them hit the bottom, I'll go straight to assist. That's another one, just get yourself some assist hooks. Don't go to Windermere or, or Yellow Blue Fishing without a pack of assist hooks, you really need them. Fourth one, pretty important, and that is to use scent. Um, scent, with yellow belly, it's probably the most applicable species I've found. Them and brim, I reckon. I don't brim fish very often, but brim seem to love scent, and so do yellow belly. The amount of times I've gone through a bit of a dry spell on the fish, lathered it up with a bit of scent, cast back out, caught a fish first cast. I just, I don't know why, but they just seem to love it, scent, yellow belly. They, it can just, especially like watching them on live site, it can just get them to commit to a lure. You know, I've had it not on there, chucked it on, cast down the live site, same fish and watch it destroy it. So, get yourself some scent. Look, I'm a big fan of the S Factor. That's the one I always run. I have got some Pro Cure that I've tried. There's a heap of different scents out there. I can't really comment on any others because I don't use them, but the S Factor, I'll find the best. So get some S Factor. It's got that UV in it and yellow belly and UV go together like bacon and eggs. So, if you're going out, make sure you've got a t tube of S-Factor in the boat. And the final one is to find healthy concentrations of fish. This time of year and this year, more than, more than I've seen the sort of past eight years out at Windermere, the fish are a lot more congregated together and concentrated. Um, in the past, you know, Windermere, it's been dropping, been low down those 30, 20%. And the fish, you know, it doesn't matter what bank you'd go to, you'd find fish everywhere. This year, I don't know if it's just to do with all the water in there, all the water coming in, I don't know what it is, but it, the fish seem to be a lot more concentrated together. So I've been finding a lot of banks to be pretty bare and you'd only see one or two fish on you know 50 to 100 meters of bank even. And then you go to some shallow points, some shallow bays, and it's just everywhere you turn the sounder, there's just fish everywhere. So what you want to do is be proactive in your movements. So don't get stuck on one bank fishing for a long time. Um, if you're not catching anything on one bank and you've gone half an hour, half an hour max, I'd be out of there, find another one. 
spot hop until you find a good concentration of active fish. Now, if you've got, you know, live tech, good sounder, even just an old school sounder, you're gonna, you can find where the fish are. And as soon as you find a concentration of fish, mark it. Even if you can't get those fish to bite straight away, mark it, keep spot hopping, and remember where that good concentration is, and come back and hit them later. They might not be active then, but in two hours they might switch on. So when you find a good spot that's holding a lot of fish, always go back to it and continue to go back because at some point those fish are going to bite. So yeah, that's my final one. Keep looking, look shallow points, shallow grassy points. I've been finding so many fish on them, but it's not every one. Some have got not many, majority you just load it up. Little islands, that type of thing. So be proactive in your movements, spot hop as much as, much as you can until you find where those active good concentrated fish are and that's how you'll start to put good numbers of fish in the boat. Right guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. Um, good luck to anyone that is going out doing trips to Windermere that hasn't, haven't gone yet. Um, you know, with the weather at the moment, it's still pretty cold. We've been getting this shitty rain come through constantly. So I think it's gonna be a pretty extended season. Um, you know, every time, I've been out four times now and each trip's got better and better. So I think, you know, right through to the end of November, this edge bite, spring edge bite, especially at Windermere, is gonna be um, bang on. So yeah, get out there, give it a crack. It's, uh, it's a great time of year to be doing it, especially when we get some better weather come through, which hopefully is more consistently. Anyway, I hope you've got something out of it, guys, and good luck whoever is heading out. And thanks for watching. Cheers.